there are times in certain people's lives when they feel that all their certainties are wavering. All their lights dimming, all the voices of their passions and affections falling silent. Mm -hmm. Including everything that enlivens and moves their being. Thus being led back to his own center, an individual confronts the problem of all problems. What am I? Then, in almost every case, he begins to see that everything he does, not only in his ordinary life, but also in the domain of higher values, only acts as a distraction, creating the illusion of a purpose and a reason, or something that allows him not to think deeply and not to go on living. Daily routines, moral codes, faiths and philosophies Intoxication of the senses and even disciplines appear to have been created or pursued by people in order to hide from their inner darkness. To escape the anguish of the vast fundamental solitude and to elude the problem of the self. In some cases such a crisis can have a fatal outcome. In other cases one reacts and shakes it off. The impulse of an animal energy that does not want to die reasserts itself, inhibits that which has been briefly intuited through such experiences, and makes one believe that it was just a nightmare, a momentary weakness of the mind, or a nervous imbalance. Then new adjustments are made in order to return to reality. Then there are the evaders. Being unable to grasp it as a whole, they turn the existential problem into a mere philosophical problem. And the game resumes. A new truth and a new system arise. They claim to see the light shining in the darkness, thus refueling the will to go on. Another equivalent solution is the passive reliance on traditional structures and on dogmatic and stereotypical forms of authority. However, there are those who can hold their ground. Something new and irrevocable has occurred in their lives. They are determined to break out of this circle that has trapped them. They abandon all faiths and renounce all hopes. They intend to dissipate the folly and to blaze a trail. What they seek is self-knowledge, and the knowledge of being within themselves. For them, there is no turning back. This is one of the ways in which, especially in the modern age, some people may approach the disciplines usually referred to as initiatic. Others are brought to the same point by a kind of recollection and natural dignity causing the clear sensation that this world is not the true world, that there is something higher than this perception of the senses and that which is merely human in origin. Such people yearn for the direct vision of reality as if in a complete awakening. In both cases a person realizes that he is not alone. He will feel close to others who have arrived at this point by another path or who, maybe, have always been there. Then they will learn their truth. Beyond the reasoning intellect, beyond beliefs and what passes today for science and culture, there is a higher knowledge. There the anguish of the individual ceases, the darkness and the contingency of the human condition dissolve, and the problem of being is resolved. This knowledge is transcendent also in the sense that it presupposes a change of state. It can be achieved only by transforming one's way of being into a new one, changing one's consciousness. Just as it is absurd for a person holding a burning coal to accept that the pain will cease before he drops the coal, Likewise, it is absurd to think that one can open a path beyond the fundamental darkness of existence while the individual remains what he is. To transform oneself, 
this is the necessary premise of higher knowledge. Such knowledge does not know problems, but only tasks and realizations. Such realizations must be understood as something entirely positive. The necessary presupposition here is the ability to consider only the concrete, real, naked relationship with oneself and with the world. Especially in the case of modern man, this consists of the condition, extrinsic and contingent relationship characteristic of the physical state of existence. As for the varieties of what has been called the spirit, they are a mere counterpart of physical existence, such as such that all of their values, good and evil, true and false, superior and inferior, do not constitute a gap in relation to what the self is, as a human being in the hierarchy of beings. That is why a crisis of radical upheaval is necessary. This is why it is necessary to have the courage to set everything aside, and to become detached from everything. The mutation of the deeper structure is the only thing that matters for the purposes of higher knowledge. This knowledge, which is at the same time wisdom and power, is essentially non-human. It can be achieved by following a way that presupposes the active and effective overcoming of the human condition. Having long trapped in a sort of magic circle, modern man knows almost nothing of such horizons. Moreover, as Joseph de Maistre correctly pointed out, those who are called scientists today have hatched a real conspiracy. They have made science their monopoly, and absolutely do not want anyone to know more than they do, or in a different manner than they do. including works by Arturo Regini, Gielo pa Paris, Ercole Quadrelli, and Gustave Mary. Thank you. I'd like to note that it has only been an excerpt of two pages, pages one and two of chapter one. Gilly, my friend, can you concoct that cocktail of yours one more time? <laughs> 